What's up my friends? Welcome back to another Electro News or weekly update. Remember that in these videos we will see 5 main parts. The first one is I will show you the project that I'm working on right now that I have right now on my table for this week. The second part will be a future project, but in this case I will want to show you some mailbag. You see, each time that I order parts for a future project, I have a box full of components, of modules, of parts, so I want to show you that and at the same time talk about some of the future projects. The third part is, well, I will show you a tool from my workshop. And the fourth will be the Q&A, where I will answer your questions from the previous week. And the fifth part, I usually tell you something more about me, about Electronoobs. So guys, let's get with the intro, prepare for the Q&A, and let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. So we start this video by talking about the project that I'm working on right now, and that will be this uh, PCB here. This is an electronic speed controller, but it's not like the previous one. This is made for brushed motors. So I have here a huge brushed motor. This is usually used for electric bikes or electric carts, and I want to control this. Because you see, one of my dreams was always, since I was little, to make myself an, elect an electric cart. But right now I can't make the cart because here, as you can see, my workshop is inside of an apartment. So I can't weld, I can't cut metals, I can't make a lot of noise because I have neighbors. But at least I'm, I will be able to make the electronic part. And that will be starting with the ESC and then make the controls and so on. So guys, this board here, as you can see, is not finished yet. I have a lot of wires. I have an FTA programmer connected to this because I still want to make some tests. This will have also current control, speed control. And you can control the, the speed with a uh, potentiometer, which will be the throttle control. And this will be for a lot of power, maybe up to 500 watts. I'm using three MOSFETs in parallel for controlling the power. It will work up to 35 volts, 36 volts. And that will then we have two voltage regulators to lower down the voltage for 24 volts and for 5 volts for the Arduino, for the chip. So let me show you some tests that I'm working on right now and then I'll talk you a little bit more about this PCB. Okay, first of all, sorry for the mess. Right now I'm starting the oscilloscope and the power supply. The power supply will be connected to this uh, circuit here. This is very simple. I'm using an Arduino for testing. Then we'll test uh, actual, the actual PCB. But right now I have three MOSFETs in parallel connected to the motor and also a small BJT as a driver. So right now we'll supply 36, 35 volts to the motor. And as you can see, it won't work because the PWM signal is not connected yet. So using the potentiometer, I, increase, I can increase that signal. Let's just wait for the oscilloscope to, to boot up so we can also see the signal. You see, if you connect one MOSFET to this, when the motor starts, when it's running, it will draw only like 2 or 3 amps. But when it starts, it will draw more than 5 amps, which is more than these MOSFETs could handle. So that's why I'm using 3 in Pearl in order to make sure that it won't burn. And the idea is to place everything here in this metal case so it will dissipate all the heat. So right now we don't have the signal yet, but when I increase this, look what happens. The motor started, as you can see, we went up to maybe, let's just make it again. Let's just look, like, look at the current when it starts. As you can see, it went up to 4.5 or so. But right now it's steady at 2 amps. And also, as you can see here, we have the PWM signal. So guys, so this is the project that I'm working on right now, so I could control this 500 watts electric brushed motor. As you can see, the PCB is not ready yet. I'm having this BJT here because I had to change a little bit the schematic. Of course, you will have the final schematic when I post the project. And also here is missing a small IC, and that will be the current sensing, sensing IC. You see, I'm using a small chip that uses the Hall effect to sense the current. So you can place a limit in the code, and if the current that is sensing is higher than your limit, it will decrease the PWM signal so it will keep always the same uh, amount of current. So that's how we control the current value and also we control the speed by having an interruption and you will have a whole sensor on your wheel or on your motor. So with that you can count the rotations of the motor or, or your wheel. And in that way you can count also the RPMs or maybe even the speed if you know the diameter, I mean the perimeter of the wheel. Okay guys, now let me show you very quick another tool that I use and maybe you won't even consider this as a tool and that is my laptop. I consider this as a tool because I use it every day. You see, I edit my videos and all the other projects that I have, my website, on my desktop PC, which is very new and works very fast. But this is very old, it has like six or seven years and also when I bought it, it wasn't that good. It's very slow. It will take like maybe 10 minutes to even start up if I turn it off. Uh, and also if I deplug, I unplug it, 
it will turn off because the battery is dead, almost dead. But I use it to make the simple codes for my projects while I'm making the projects and also for my scripts. Because usually I make my scripts, as you can see here, this is a script for this video. And while I'm reading here, for example, now I program the PCB, blah, 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 then I'll record exactly that. So in that way, I have all the footage for each part of the script. So that's very important for me because I use it every day for simple codes or for watch something on the internet, a circuit or so. So this is my laptop. This is an HP and it works on Windows. By the way, I use here this laptop because I don't have space for the desktop PC, which I try to play some footage with that uh, on your screen right now, because that is very big. And here, as you can see, the space is very limited. So I need something small to be close to me to see the scripts and my uh, Arduino codes. So that's why I'm using this and it's a very important tool for my workshop. This is how my workshop looks every day that I'm working during the week. As you can see, everything is a mess. I have my project on my table. All this is open. I have my laptop. This is also open. I have tools all around. So usually I don't organize my workshop table only if I'm not recording that week. So usually I record the video, then I clean everything up and prepare it for the next week. So this is just a simple view of my workshop during the project. Okay guys, so this would be the part where I show you a future project, but instead of that, as I told you, we'll make a mailbag. So as you can see here, I have some boxes and usually when I, I think of a project, I make a to-do list and I start making a research and I gather the parts that I need. Then I make an order on eBay or Aliexpress, any of these pages, and then I order the part. So then I will receive those parts until I don't have all the parts, I don't place that project on the to-go because till I, till I don't have all the parts, I can start the project. I can't even start testing. So here is some of the modules that I've gathered, but as you can see, I have a lot of boxes and there are a lot of small modules. So I don't want to make this too long. So let's just start with this box here and we'll leave these two for future projects. So for future videos. So let me just put this uh, here. Okay guys, so let's just start with this box. And if this will get too long, I will just cut it and maybe place this part in another future update. Okay, so the first part, this is, uh, this is a manual pump. And I want this to I want to use this in an airsoft gun, which will be 3D printed. So till I don't have the design, till I don't have all the parts, the spring and everything that I need, I won't be able to use this. But just have in mind that on my to-do list, I have an airsoft gun that will be 3D printed and also quite big. Here I have, oh, I, I think I know what this is. Yes, these are some speakers. These are very high quality, hi-fi speakers that I want to use for some Bluetooth uh, headphones with very high quality. So these were like 20 bucks each because these are hi-fi and have a lot of quality. I'm not an expert expert in uh, speakers, but I know that these are a little bit better than normal speakers. Okay, so this is a powerful bust and book uh, converter that I bought thinking of using this for a homemade power supply, but I never use this. What more? This is a power distribution board for a drone and I think the rest of the parts are here as well. As well. This is just enameled copper wire that I will use for my Tesla coil that I'm thinking of making this for a lot of time, but I never have time for making the machine that will wind the coil. Anyway, this is another buck converter. Here I have some amplifiers that are just poor quality. I never use these amplifiers. Okay, so what more we have? Okay, so these are a lot of small speakers. And you see, in order to make some tests for the Bluetooth headphones, I bought a lot of speakers in a kit. For maybe like $10, you get a lot of types of speakers, small ones, squared ones, round ones. And in this way, I will be able to make a lot of tests and select the one that is better. Okay, these are linear potentiometer, but these are uh, 20 turns and also big, because usually the 20 turns potentiometers are very small. So I bought a lot of these for use uh, and use this with my homemade power supplies and so on. Heat dissipator, and I'm not even sure why this is here. Another amplifier, this is a 100 watts amplifier. So I never use this because I use another a different one for the receiver for the Bluetooth speaker, the huge Bluetooth speaker. What we have here. Oh, this is the module for the piezoelectric uh, mist maker. This works at uh, 1.7 megahertz, I think. So when I was making the, the Halloween project, I, haven't, I didn't have the circuit, so I bought it, so I received it and never use it, uh, use it after because because that project is already finished. This is some plastic optic fiber that I wanted to use for a project to transmit sound that I never uh, really get to make for the Tesla coil as well, but that is still my to-do list. 
This is an arcade joystick because I want to make my own arcade game with a TV, with a retro TV. But that is also my to-do list. I'm not sure when I will make that. Some more amplifiers as well. This is another amplifier. These are some electromagnets. The, this will be the... I want to use this as an actuator to make maybe like a PAD control for a, a metal ball. I'm not sure. So we have a lot of um, electronic coils or electromagnets. Another amplifier for uh, transmitting and receiving light. These are the legs for the drone. The drone that I have made because I made this drone but 3D printed. But this is the commercial uh, one which cost me only like $20. So if you want to make the 3D printed one you're good to go. But for only $20 you can get the entire body of the drone. This is also some uh, glass fiber, uh, optic fibers. Some more enable copper wire. The upper part of that drone which is the power distribution as well. This is a very small brush drone that I wanted to hack and make my own one with more uh, bigger motors. Another amplifier and that's pretty much it. So guys, this will be the mailbag for today. I'll try to open these ones in future videos for Electro News or Weekly Update. So now let's go with the Q&A and let's see the questions that we had in, in the previous video. Okay guys, so here we are with the Q&A. I have my smartphone here and I go through the comments in the video of the past week. So I'll answer only the questions that have the Q&A uh, question because there are a lot of other topics that I won't go into. So if there, there are too many questions, I will cut this in edit so it won't be too long. And sorry that I'm a little bit shining today but because here is like 1000 degrees and there is nothing I can do. I, I don't have an air conditioning and I have to keep close the window and the door because otherwise we'll have a lot of noise here. Okay, so let's go. The first question is from Evin, Evin Sash Raj. So tell us about your daily routine, how much time do you spend on the project daily and uh, some comments about your time management. Okay, so I already talked about this in a previous Q&A, so I really recommend you to watch that because it's very long and I don't want to go through all the steps, how I prepare myself, how I make the scripts, how I make the videos. So I'll try to link below the video of that Q&A, so please, please watch this, watch that. And in that video, I'll tell you everything that you have to know about all my schedules. Okay, so the next question is from Start Start All Bytes. Why do you, why why have you started making videos and uploading them to YouTube and how you how you were old then? I think that I think that you want to say how old old I was uh, back then. So the first video that I have uploaded to YouTube was a video that I had to record for my a project of my university. So I, I was in my first year of university. I think I recorded something about the ESC for a brushless motor for a drone. And then I made the same video explaining how I've made that and uploaded it to YouTube. So that was my first video and that's when I started uh, uh, everything about Electronoobs. Actually, my first content was on Instagram where I had this uh, account, Electronoobs, and I was posting pictures of my projects on my university. And I think I was 20 years old. Okay, so the next question, question is from Michael Ver Verker. I'm very sorry if I can't pronounce well your name. I'm very sorry. How long did it take you to make your escape room? From design it to being done. Okay, so as I told you in that video, the escape room took me like one and a half years, but that wasn't only my work because we were a team. I mean, I was in charge for all the electronics, everything that was wires and LCDs and um, Arduinos. But there was this other guy that were, was making the walls and the panels, the wood part of the panels. And also the metal of the panels were sent, was sent to a factory, so we have to wait for that. I had to wait for the, that guy to finish the walls and all the, the fake arrangements and the tubes, the plastic tubes. So in, in general, everything took me around one year, maybe a little bit more because the project was not well made. I recommend you to first make your project and then uh, make the escape room because making it on the way is not a good option. Okay, so I found a new question. This is from Adam. And the question goes like this. I love your videos. Just wondering, why don't you build a bigger 3D printer? You often say that you, you have to print the parts. So you, uh, with your skill, you could build your own 3D printer based on a wrap wrap and another project. Okay, so basically he asked me, why don't I have a bigger printer that I build in order to print bigger prints? Well, the main reason for that is space. As you can see, my workshop is not that big. My apartment is very small. I'm looking for a bigger house or an apartment uh, but I can't find it because here in Barcelona this is very expensive. So if I had more space, I also would buy maybe a CNC engraver, a huge CNC mill to cut metal parts, 
also a CNC laser cutter that I could, that could cut an MDF or maybe acrylic but those are very very big so that's why I'm not making a, my own 3D printer because that will be very big and I don't know where to place it as you can see this is one of my printers and maybe I will sell this because I don't have space for this it will occupy me a lot of space and I also have the creality in the other room so basically everything all the projects that are very big I won't do that I won't do those because I don't have space that's the main reason okay another question from Srinivas S and the question is could, could you tell us what happened to the huge 3d printed plane RC plane still no updates on the flight well as I told you here in Barcelona it's very difficult to get out and I don't have a car because you can't take a huge plane with the metro or the bus because it will definitely break because it's just plastic so first I will need a car second of all right now with the coronavirus we were under lockdown and the third part I will try to I hope that I won't forget to record a video with the plane right now is on the wall because it's huge and I don't have enough space and also while moving it I break the tip of one motor so I would have to retake that project and maybe make some uh, fix a little bit of plane and maybe ask someone to take me with his car outside of the Barcelona to maybe test it but that is also difficult because imagine that I go outside and something breaks I don't have the battery so I'll have to take with me all the tools all the battery maybe even a battery charger maybe all the propellers maybe even some glue if I break it because I can go for a test imagine that the first test the first test of the plane fails all I can do is to just come home fix it and then take another ride outside of the Barcelona and record it once again so that's right now one of the main problems for me to grow the space that I have that's why I'm looking for a bigger a bigger workshop and I hope I really hope that I will have it soon okay so the next question is from Santa Carey I'm not sure if I pronounced your name right okay so the question is can you make a projector out of a smartphone screen great work okay so actually this project is is on my to-do list I'm gathering the parts I have some old smartphones that I could use the screen from that smartphones take the back layer of the LCD and maybe put a light behind it with some lenses and create a projector so I'm not sure if I will be I will succeed with that but for that for sure I will post that on my YouTube channel even if I fail it because with that we will learn even more so stay tuned for that I'm not sure when I will have that uh, that project so guys this was the video for this week I hope that you had a great time and that you have learned something new so we have seen the project that I'm working on right now which is the ESC for a brush DC motor we have seen some future projects with the mailbag and the, the components that I'm planning to use for to use for those uh, for those projects we have seen the Q&A and also I've shown you my laptop and what I'm using for my scripts inside of my workshop. I hope that you like this and I will see you in the next Electro News video. Keep up you guys!